Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at another one of Mosho's absolutely jaw-dropping progenitor effect mecha action figures. Now before I say anything else, these are the greatest mecha action figures I have ever, ever, ever seen and that is saying so much. These are so heavy, robust, have a metal internal frame, the attention to detail is beyond anything I've seen on anything else, and these are just perfect out of the box. If you haven't seen my previous review of one of these, which is the Takeda Shingen, that thing came with so, so much in it. But what we're taking a look at today is the Date Masamune, and this ticks even more of my own personal boxes than that one did. It's blue, it's sleek, and it has an overall almost Gundam-y look to it. This, to me, even outdoes the Shingen. So yeah, just to sum this up, this is ridiculously big, so this will dominate any mecha action figure or model kit collection, and almost comes in at the size of a perfect grade Gundam. The quality is off the charts and blows anything else away, I'm talking metal build Gundam has nothing on these. Inside the box with these you get so many accessories, so much going on, and a lot of cool extras. And the best actual aspect about these is the price point is ridiculously low. Honestly, there's nothing negative to say about these. These are the greatest mech action figures around. So let's wind back the clock a little bit and get this unboxed. Oh, but first, this is actually a pre-release sample. So as far as I know, this is not released just yet. This was sent onto me by Gundam Central, aka GundamModelCenter.com. So if you do want one of your own, I will throw a link to that website down in the description. So jumping right on into the aesthetics, and when you get this out of the box, the initial impression is this is heavy, huge, has ridiculously sleek proportions, and is detailed as hell. When it comes to the colors, this is predominantly in a matte blue with a nice matte orange contrast. The blue is broken up by being supplemented with a nice, almost greenish sky blue, and some dark notes which include a metallic gunmetal and a nice matte dark grey. And that isn't even it. Beyond that, it's broken up into an even lighter gunmetal. We've got some silver and black detailing here and there. And this is all finished off with a gold crest on the head and a white, almost Gundam-like muzzle. The details do not stop there. We've even got some subtle gold here and there. An awesome clear segment in the chest, which is in a nice, smoky black. And finally, the unmistakable glint of actual metal in the exposed die-cast joints. To complement the paintwork, we also have some fantastic looking decals. These are predominantly in white and orange. The detail is ridiculous. These are crisp, perfect, and put in the absolute perfect places. When it comes to the actual physical mold of this, it is ridiculous. Everything is master crafted. The layering of armor plates is absolute poetry. This is the apex of mecha design right here. This figure is an absolute masterpiece. Some more details on here include shoulder thrusters, which are ridiculously detailed, pistons in the back of the arms, we've got piping on the backs of the legs, and the overlapping plates on the back and spine is ridiculously detailed. Everywhere you look on this, there's something to see. Every millimeter of this has been given painstaking detail and care. This has been crafted to the absolute highest specifications, 
and I've never seen anything, anything that looks this good. Bandai Tamashii Nations, pack your bags and hit the road. Mosho have well and truly taken it to school. So now jumping into the accessories and here is the Mosho Date Masamune with absolutely everything that it comes with. And this comes with a ridiculous armory. Some of which in here we would have seen in some format or another with the Takeda Shingen. Like the stand, the magnetic base, and maybe even the swords to some degree. But what the Date is packing that we didn't see with that figure is a whole bunch of long range weaponry. Honestly, what we get in here is obscene. We might as well start checking them out. So first off inside the box we've got a whopping 7 pairs of hands, which of course is 14. These are split up into expressive posing ones like fists, widespread open hands, relaxed hands, and a bunch of different hands then for using with the weapons and equipment. So first off jumping into taking a look at the close range weapons that we have in here and that is a pair of long swords. Once again very similar to what we would have seen with the Takeda Shingen. And just like with that figure, there's so much you can do with these. The simplest aspect is to just throw them into the hands. We've got hands that are specifically for the sword, and we've got hands that are specifically for the scabbard. Swapping the hands on this figure is super simple. These are all clips, not ball joints, so it's not as difficult as a lot of mecha figures tend to be. The grip on the hands is absolutely perfect, maybe a little bit tight out of box, but eventually you'll get used to it. This looks ridiculously cool, and this is just it holding on to the weapons. We've got more options. So when it comes to actually storing these, we do have a whole bunch of adapters inside of the box that give you a lot of different options. This means you can mount these onto the hard points on the side skirting armors or up on the back, just like you can see right here in the manual. Now, I already did this in the Takeda Shingen review, so if you want to see more details about doing that, you can check out that one. But the Dante right here has something a little more unique up its sleeve. And literally, I mean up its sleeve. So in the rear of the forearm, we actually have two tiny little sub arms which can fold out like so. These can grab onto the katana like so. As far as I can see, this only seems to be the shorter one. And this is pretty awesome. I'm not sure if this is for defense, for attack, for a quick unexpected assault or something like that. But this is a pretty cool feature and something I've never seen before. So finally moving on to the ranged equipment that we have in here and first off is my absolute mecha guilty pleasure which is a pair of dual pistols. When it comes to a mecha this really doesn't make any sense whatsoever and that is why I love it. Once again these are just as detailed as the rest of the figure. These are in a light grey with the same white and orange decals as we would have seen before. Popping them into the hands is super simple, they just slip on in like so, hold on perfectly, and attaching them onto the mecha is just as simple as before for some dynamic, over the top, double pistol wielding mecha action. Name something more edgelordy than that, you cannot. Well I suppose it's got katanas too. As we've seen with this figure so far there are options and the same goes for the pistols. First off we've got a pair of holsters. First off, you attach this little clip onto it just like so, and this allows them to be mounted onto the side skirting armor for the pistols to be inserted into. Just like that. Now, I will mention, answering the most important questions, yes, the mecha can actually reach around to the pistols when they're in the holsters. Because that's something you need to know. And of course, when there's options, there's more options with this particular figure. So if we flip up this little flap around on the butt flap, we've got a little bit of a hole here for this expansion section. Attach that into the hole like so and now we've got two more hard points for attaching stuff onto. Now this can be used for anything including the included katanas, but right now we're just going to stick on the two holsters and you can have both of the pistols stored round back just like you're seeing right here. Again, so many options and from some of the pictures I'm seeing in the comic included in the manual, we might be seeing some more things in future. Moving on through the long range weapons now, we've got what I guess is the main event inside of this box, which is this huge rifle. Once again in matching colors to the Date itself, the same level of detail, same ridiculous amount of varying colors, intricate parts, and on top of that compared to the pistols, there's a whole bunch of moving aspects to this as well. So if this wasn't cool enough already, we actually have some bullets for using with this which are made out of straight up metal. These can be fed into the magazine like this, we've got a sliding mechanism which can allow them to move in, move up and out again, and this can all be loaded into the rifle with the bullets inside. Attaching this is simple once again, just attach it on in the usual way the hands do in here, and this thing looks phenomenal. It's long, it's detailed, it looks incredible. Seamless with the robot itself, I have to admit, I'm super impressed. 
Just like the pistols, this can be stored when it's not in use. In order to do that, you just need to take it off of the mecha, remove the entire barrel section by pulling it off, remove this little front section of the gun, and then attach the tip or muzzle end of the rifle back in like the whole weapon has collapsed in on itself. Finally then, if you push in the stock at the back, that will bring down the sights, and you can lock the bottom of the stock in place so it doesn't reopen up again. As for where this attaches, technically you could use any of the 3mm hard points on here, but in order to do what it shows in the manual, you have to remove where you had the double holsters attached earlier on, the whole rig for that, attach in this simple little two-point attachment point right here. It's diecast, so it's not that simple. And then you can just pop the rifle onto that for storage round back like so. So last but not least in here is the stand. We would have seen this with the Shingen as well. And this still to this day is the coolest stand I've ever seen with a model kit or a figure. And that's because it's made out of metal and we have some magnets on the bottom of the feet. So that means this actually sticks to the base, which is particularly cool. That does mean you can pull off some over-the-top poses without the risk of this falling over. Now, sadly, this isn't completely anti-grav and not strong enough to actually hold it in some crazy, crazy, crazy poses, and the magnets in the feet are not strong enough to hold this, well, standing sideways on your fridge because I totally tried, doesn't work. And just like we've seen so far with this figure, there is options as well. We've got this magnetic stand right here, which actually attaches onto the base via magnets again for some aerial poses. In order to attach the date onto this, we've got a little bit of a piece of plastic. You just pull out like so to show where it attaches, and then you just attach it on simple as. So now you can get your over-the-top poses out of this while it's in the air. I will mention the pole of the stand is metal, so it's very robust, and the only real down point to this is the fact that you can't angle it in any way, so it's always perpendicular to the ground, so you can't get any leaning angles for flying poses, but still, works quite well. We have another option for using with this base right here, and that is this katana stand, exactly the same as what we would have seen with the Shingen. This is magnetic, so it attaches onto the base just like so, and you can use this in which to display the two included swords. Now, I will mention there is no options for displaying the rifle or the pistols, besides, I guess, sticking them on the robot. So the last feature we're going to take a look at with the Date right here is something we saw with the Shingen as well, and that is some LED functionality. The Shingen had some lights in its eyes, and so does the Date right here, and then some. So first off, in order to light up the eyes, you do need a pair of AG1 batteries. These are used in an LED unit which is inside of the head, and these are very easy to install. Once they are installed, just press the center of the crest on its head and the lights come on. These look phenomenal. These catch the light, or should I say, cast light so perfectly. They're nice, they're bright, there's no light bleed, nothing like that. These are incredible. If that wasn't cool enough, this outdoes the Shingen with LEDs. Well, it's outdone the Shingen every single way so far it could possibly do that. Inside of the chest cavity, we also have another LED unit. We've got a hatch which you can open up in order to take that out. This works with the clear effects in the front. You need two AG13 batteries, big old batteries for this segment. And once you've got everything attached in, clicking down on the button actually cycles through the modes. We've got green, we've got orange, and then we've got a cycling mode which cycles through green and orange. So there's the Dante with the two LED units activated, and this looks incredible, honestly. I'm not sure if this is the best, well, it is most certainly the best mecha action figure I've ever looked at, but I'm actually debating whether this is the best mecha anything I've ever looked at. This thing is incredible, and there's another one of these coming out in future. So yeah, I can't wait to see what Mosho does. I am so impressed. So finally, moving on to the last part, the review, and that, of course, is the articulation. Now, first off, when it comes to the actual strength of the actual figure itself, the joints and everything, this is rock solid. I've never seen anything like it. Even the Shingen sample I was sent, not as rock solid as this. It's crazy. So there's a lot of nice, subtle things done with this figure. For example, at the back of the neck here, we've got this little up and down moving armor segment to make sure that does not get in the way of when it's looking up. So that is very, very cool. As for the actual articulation we get then, we've got all the way up, all the way down, left and right that can spin all the way around, and we've got the tilt you get from a ball joint. On top of that, we do have this extension and retraction gimmick in the neck, so you can actually get a lot of articulation out of this, or you can collapse it down so I guess it doesn't look as long-necked. That is cool. Lights back on. 
At the shoulders then we've got an armor shift at the torso right here. The shoulders then continue all the way to the front just like this which is a lot. Out to the back it's not as much but they do flare back a little bit. The full 360 spin right there. Raising the arms up we've got a flap in here and that can go all the way up just like so. Just check out everything that is going on inside of there, nice. Once again, at the shoulder, we've got this armor flap which moves up and down and the whole shoulder moves somewhat independently to the arm. We have four of these flap segments at the front and the rear of both shoulders, a full 360 spin at the upper arm like so. As for the bend at the elbow, it bends all the way to there, but there is a lot going on here. When the arm is bending with a shift at this little armor segment right here, very, very nice. And around back then we do have an actual extending piston. Very cool. At the wrist we've got the full pivot right here. This can spin all the way around and we've got that flex from the joint right here. The ab crunch is nothing short of glorious. There it is all the way down. And there it is all the way out to the back. As you can see the ab section actually collapses in as this moves which is so impressive. And as it moves forward, we've got lots of armor inside the actual lower back there to make sure we don't get any unruly or nasty gaps. Ridiculous. We also have a side to side crunch on top of that and we can rotate it at the upper joint and the lower joint of the abdominal section. That is beautiful. The skirting armor on here is both a hinge and a ball joint so it can flip up like so but it can also be kept in the raised position like this to keep it out of the way of the leg. This side skirting here nets you some up and down and we've got some back and forward pivot as well. To call this a double premium butt flap would be a absolute disservice because we've got an opening section here. These can both move like so. Feels like we've got a little bit of articulation inside of there as well, maybe a ball joint and these can actually flare out like so, showing some nice internal gunmetal detail. Inside the hip we do have a sliding mechanism which allows the leg to drop down to a lower position. Once again this is die cast so it is rock solid. So when it does come to the kicks so we can get out of this there it is all the way up to the front which is ridiculous. Swinging that around to the back once again that's more than you could ever need. And then as for the splits the date right here will pull them off without a single issue. We have some rotation at the upper leg right here and if the detail inside the leg here was not cool enough when you bend the knee the upper segments open up a little bit more. Look at that. From the side it's even more impressive. I mean from the give that a bend we've got pistons and everything in there. Just look at that. Glorious. Next up we have a lot going on at the ankle as well. We've got some armor right here which will pivot. The ankle can extend down to that point. We've got a bend at the toe as well which goes, well, hard, honestly. That is one hell of a bend at the toe. So once again, back to there, back to there. And as for the side to side pivot, it's nice and stiff and goes from there all the way to there. So when it comes to the articulation on bigger figures or bigger kits, usually you don't get the same sort of nimble or easy to pose-ness as you would on something a little bit smaller. But this is huge, big, over the top, but poses so seamlessly, so perfectly, and at the same time is rock solid. This is the greatest posing experience I have ever had with anything. Actually, this might be the greatest anything I've ever taken a look at on this channel. This is insane. So yeah, that right there is it for the review. If I just sum it up, aesthetically this thing is mind-blowingly beautiful. It's huge, it's half metal, the colors are beyond awesome, and it's just an absolute feast for the eyes. When you jump into the accessories, this thing comes absolutely fully loaded. And like I mentioned, or did I forget to mention, that this is also meant to have some shooting effects as well, but the sample I was sent does not have any. So there's even more in the box than I saw in this video. And everything is perfect, high spec, the best spec, 20 out of 10. Then when it comes to the actual strength of the figure and the articulation, this thing has blown me away. The Takeda Shingen was such a good figure, but this one, believe it or not, is even better. I even forgot to mention the LEDs. This is obscene. This is the best and greatest mecha anything I've ever taken a look at on this channel, hands down. This is phenomenal. Mosho. Damn. 
They have raised the bar sky high, space high. It's blasted out of the galaxy, the universe completely. This, I think, is the greatest mecha anything around. Besides so a real actual robot, maybe, but this might even be better. Get one. But yeah, what can I say? That right there is it for the review. I got this from Gundam Central. They sent this on to me, so check out that website if you want one of your own. As always, thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video and none of these videos would be possible without each and every one of you watching these videos, including those of you who are supporting me on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Van Fon, Org59061, Lawrence Seahack, Kill Me Inc., Joseph Kukluk, Joe, Gunpla UK Limited, Global Frequency Studios, Frisetti, Caleb Engelhart, and Craig Jerry. Okay, it's completely after the review and I keep finding more. I thought the shoulder looked a little bit awkward on this, just sticking out in the way that shoulders can do in a pose like this sometimes. But you can even, whoa, camera, I can even rotate this around. I've never seen a rotating shoulder armor before. You can align it to go with the arm. It actually rotates separate to the arm. It's awesome. I also noticed we've got some detail on the back of the crest ride here. I mean, who puts detail on the back of a crest? Painted extra gunmetal detail. This thing is ridiculous. Seriously. Ridiculous.